Hello! I'll just wait for everybody to come join us before I get started. I hope everybody is well. Hi Gillian. Well that's one person that's come and join us. Joined us. Malcolm. Hi Malcolm. Hey Oz. So I have three of you guys, my regular three that come and join me. Um, I believe Matty will be joining us a little bit later. Um, hopefully not too long to wait, but yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, I love, I, uh, yeah, I like this top too. Yes, this, this top is awesome. So yeah, I am literally going to get started. Um, so how are you guys? How is everything? What mayhem and madness have you caused this week? Hey, Manny. I can see that you're here. gutted but at least you're back home safe um i hope you had a wonderful time in new york by the way yeah i agree jillian i like coffee as well i'm yeah i didn't make coffee i was kind of in a rush um so yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah malcolm i know what kind of madness you've had this week so yeah it's been mayhem and madness for you definitely Hey Troy and hey Andrew. I know you you're both together watching, so yeah. Be sociable with each other. Yeah, I'm I'm lacking on my coffee. I know. It's not like me to be lacking on coffee. But it's okay. I have dandelion and burdock. It's 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 the second best, admittedly. Oh no. Oh yes, I did see your list, Gillian, about the coffee coffee pot. Both both of them being broken. That's 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 like no. That's like me mega no.
What's all right for you, Troy? You got beer. I will admit, I'm somewhat jealous. Somewhat. Not entirely, but somewhat. Uh, what am I doing? What colour next am I doing? Oh, now that's just cruel, Malcolm. Telling me you have chocolate. You know I'm on a diet. That's just mean. Telling me you have chocolate. Like you're just mean. You're mean to me. Sorry, I'm trying to find a brush that I want to use. There's nothing yucky about beer. Matty, I really hope you're not actually going to put those two things together. Double chocolate fudge cake with lemon meringue pie. That, that, that just doesn't work. On so many levels, that does not work. Beer doesn't suck. Beer is a lifelong necess necessity. So has, I'm going to put a question out for everybody. Has anybody read my little um, thesis post on my paranormal project? Hobgoblin is a necessity. What did you think about it, Gillian, by the way? I'm just kind of curious to get people's thoughts on it.
What did you all think about it? Because I'm kind of curious to see what you all thought, think of my, th my th thesis, my basic plan. Oh, thank you, Gillian. Well, I will say that, like, it's part one of my thesis because there's going to be a second part that goes a bit more in depth on, like, what I'm aiming to work on. At least it doesn't go on the typical uh, angels, demons route. It's energy. I'm not afraid to speak my mind. I've learned my lesson from not speaking my mind. These days I just speak my mind. I don't know how you're funding me, Matty. How are you funding me? Are you buying me the equipment I need? Because I kind of need some equipment. And nobody's kind enough to let me borrow their equipment. Like you. Thank you, Malcolm. I may have questions for you, Matty, a little bit later. So I may I may ring you later if you're not in work.
Agreed, Matty. The, the word demon is so overrated and overly used that, you know, to be honest, people just go into places and use the word demon for negative energy and it's, it, it's tiresome. Because not all demons are demons. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no, what I'll do, Matty, is I'll I'll ring you later, okay? And we can discuss the idea that I have and I've just put stuff all over my finger. Matty, you are a real demon. I agree, Malcolm. It's definitely overused. It's... As I say, I refuse to use the word demon or angel or spirit. I just call it energy. It is an energy force that is beyond our comprehension. So, yeah, there are a few things that I'm going to be talking about once I've done my eyeliner. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't Crowley. Although, although, let's face it, Crowley is an interesting figure in the occult scene. Very interesting theories. Um, a lot of it is based on Kabbalah, so yeah. Gillian, do you mean Crowley, 
Crowley from um, Good Omens, perchance. Oh, that Crowley. Okay. Oh. Matt, you and me have our fair share of demons. And let's face it, like I said a couple of days ago, I, I'm not afraid of demons. I run up and hug them because even demons need love too. So, you know, they're not that bad. You see, if he was easier to deal with, then he wouldn't be as fun. And it could be worse. He could be trying to make you blind. <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah Gillian I'm just like I've just read your message Gillian and I'm thinking 10 years your heart's desire and you get to kiss him mm -mm. I probably wouldn't kiss my demon we have a mutual understanding they don't bother me I don't bother them we work together no arguments and yes, I have just covered my hand in the eyeliner stuff. So, what do you think of the eyeshadow look? I'm actually quite impressed. I'm kind of toying. Do I actually put eyelashes on? Do I fight with the, the annoying thing known as eyelashes? This could be dangerous. And the nail, the uh, eyelash glue has just disappeared. Bear with me. Ugh, that it. Oh, I'm glad you think it's colourful.
Oh, poor Andrew, having trouble with the internet. You should go be sociable, Troy. Oh no, that sucks. Yeah, that sometimes works, but it doesn't always work, Matty. Can't get this eyelash out. There we go. Yeah, not necessarily. It depend. It also depends where they are in the world, and as they're in, like, pretty much central London.
Ta-da! Eyelashes on. That actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. <laughs> you're always lacking, Matty. But you're awesome. And I wouldn't change you for the world because you're an awesome mate. So, yeah, basically, as I was saying earlier about, like, my theory and that, is I'm basically planning, like, some of you may know this plan from, like, years ago, but I'm basically planning to investigate whether those that can do astral projection or astral travel can actually manipulate tools of the paranormal field. So things like K2 meters, digital recorders, um, cameras, those sort of things. As well as if they can use spiritual tools such as Ouija boards. You know, because, at th because my base point is that if astral travel is working along the same spiritual vibration, then they should be able to manipulate tools such as k2 meters digital recorders cameras ouija boards that sort of stuff that is my theory and i want to prove it or disprove it you know being a scientist has its advantages <laughs> no, to be fair, Matty, you're not always a slacker. And now my house ghost wants to move things in the kitchen. Fine, see if I care. You would do it after I start moving my camera to a different location. Okay, if you guys heard that on camera, things are actually moving in my kitchen. Seriously, I'm on webcam. I'm doing a live stream. Well, you know, Matty, you learn something new every day. There's, you know, we're both scientists on this field, so. Yay! <laughs> Gillian, K2 
considering the second bang that I heard in the kitchen actually made me jump. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping there isn't a louder bang. Please don't do a louder bang because I jumped. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually pleading with my house ghost now. You know, I'm literally sat here going, please, please don't do it. <laughs> Nah, it's all right, Troy, don't worry. I, I want to get proof of it actually happening in my house. So, yeah. <laughs> Malcolm? Yeah, that's not spiritual. That's just smelly. Yeah, I know. Well, I have been hoping for like a full body apparition, but if a full body apparition happens, they're literally going to have to like come into view because where I'm sat, you can't really walk behind me. Having said that, that probably wouldn't stop the house ghost. So I, I leave it in their power. You know, I just go, okay. Fine, you want to do what you want to do, fine by me, you do it. Just don't terrify me in the process. Just don't make me jump. I know you like making me jump because I'm not expecting things. Hi, Spencer. Yeah, I'll do that for you, Spencer. Obviously, I can't do it right now because I'm doing the live stream. Um, but yeah. So, there we go. That is the makeup side of my blog done this evening. As I was saying, as I was talking about my little experiment, my little project on the go at the moment, um, some of you may know that this little project has been in the pipeline for about five years. There are a few friends of mine who know about it to the nth degree. Um, <laughs> Matty, <laughs> yes. Ghostbusters, that's who I'm going to call. Actually, it might be it might be a case of I'm not gonna call them first, I'm just gonna get all my equipment out first and do all the proof and then go, okay, here's what's in my house. Now you guys can come in and you know do your own little investigation. Um but yeah, basically I am planning to do a couple of experiments um with a Ouija board and you know, the idea of astral projection. Um, I'm also planning to actually use a digital recorder to capture any EVPs because I want it to work alongside. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm planning to do. Um, but that's probably not gonna happen for another couple of weeks, maybe another couple of months. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it's that's kind of what I'm working on. Um, I have been like planning on it for about uh, five years, as I said, um, but it's been very much like, well, how would I do it? Who would I get to come and help me? Um, and, like, am I just limiting it to one set area or am I using all tools to prove or disprove? Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on and planning. Um, so yeah.
that's that's what I've been doing. Um, there are a few little things that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, if you haven't seen my Friday blog post, um, I'm actually going to be changing my blog a little bit. Um, it is not going to be solely makeup anymore because as much as I love doing makeup and, you know, as much as I love having that passion with makeup, I have so many interests that I'm finding it very hard to just focus on one thing. Um, so now that my blog has like hit that year, um, one year anniversary, um, I've kind of decided, okay, I want to make my blog that little bit more. Um, so I'm going to be using my blog to promote my idea, um, my pro poetry. Um, I am going to be using it to write a couple of short stories. Um, I, I'm going to still do like the product reviews and things like that. I'm still going to do some makeup. Um, makeup is going to be limited to a Tuesday and a Friday. Monday blog posts are going to be everything from the off-topic blogs because I'm no longer do, doing off-topic blogs. Um, I'm going to be doing unboxings um, of a wide range. I'm going to be doing things like discussing like my poetry, my writing and all that on a Monday. Um, my Saturday makeup, um, like skincare stuff is going to happen on a Saturday and that's still going to be on YouTube. Um, Sundays, obviously I'm still going to do my, my live streams on Facebook on a Sunday night because they're fun and you guys seem to enjoy them. You guys get involved. Um, I have noticed that you guys are getting more and more involved, which is great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to still do that. But as I said, the witch's boudoir is basically becoming more of what I planned it to be a year ago. So yeah. Yeah, I, ghosts are one element. Um, when I talk about spirit, I am talking a little bit more than just ghosts. Um, ghosts to me mean that they are um, using an image of a someone who has passed on. Um, spirit in its rawest, purest form is energy and can manifest in whatever form it chooses to. Um, so yeah, I, f I find that a little bit hard to just use the word ghost when you're talking about the whole wide genre. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to say they're too earthbound either because I think it depends on what they need to learn because spirit is forever learning. Um, so, yeah, um, that's just my opinion. Um, you know, if, you know, if you want to discuss it, we can discuss it a bit further. But, you know, when it comes to the point in you know, in the, in the point of like ghosts, when they are too earthbound, they're generally trying to learn, continue learning. Um, and as I say, download and upload to the main source energy. Um, you know, only when, you know, in the point of like, when they're like a spirit that just continues to play over and over on a set loop, like a tape recorder, I would say that's a spirit that has become trapped in an embodiment of time. So, you know, that would be a two earthbound spirit because it's trapped in that fixed point. Um, whereas when you're talking about ghost, as in the way you're talking about it, no, they're not earthbound. They can manifest in whatever way they want to. They can, you know, as I said in my thesis, they are like an energy ball that manifests in whatever way it chooses and can live a life in whatever form it wants to, whether it is human, animal, plant, or like a rock on the ground or in the ground, you know, it's still a life and it's still learning. And that's how spirit is. Spirit is ever learning like we are ever learning. We are a mortal part of spirit. So we're forever learning. Hi, Simon. Yeah, no, when, yeah, when you're talking about spirit, uh, no, a lot of people here, when it comes to, like, 
spirit and ghost. Uh, the people here on my like Facebook page are a bit more savvy. Um, yeah, be careful when you use the word ghost because you're meaning a spirit that is basically haunting a location that is trapped in that area and is refusing to move. It's not really a phenomena, it is energy. Hope you're okay, Simon, by the way. Hope work's going okay. Play nicely, Matty. Yeah, I mean, again, you and me, um, Simon, you and me were talking about this privately. Um, a lot of the people here on this live stream um, who are all talking um, have all been like talking privately with me about A, my idea, B, certain things that are going on. Yeah, being a spiritualist is, you know, you would be careful with what terminology you use, Spencer. I understand where you're coming from, but don't think that everybody is limited in their knowledge. Um, you know, be careful in your terminology. Um, Simon, did you have any other questions, by the way? Because I know you had a couple of questions that you asked me yesterday. Um, so I was wondering if you had any other questions. Don't mind me while I saw my hair up. The nightmare that is my hair. Words are a part of feelings and intuition. Without words, you know, how can we express our feelings? How can we express our intuition? We learn, yes, through our gut feeling. And, you know, gut feeling is intuition and feeling. However, words express it. Um, you know, it's all about words. Words are part of feelings and intuition. So saying that words don't matter is like saying if someone insults you, those words don't matter. Even though they may hurt you and insult you, it's still those words matter. And it's the, it's the same when you get a compliment from somebody. Those words may make you feel really, really proud, really, really happy. You know, it's the same feeling. You know, words are a part of feelings and intuition. Okay, Simon, I shall speak to you later. Again, brains, you know, brains work with logic. You know, they work on the same boundaries of. Words are actually one of the most powerful tools. And yes, we can express ourselves without saying a word by 
body language. But body language is still a language and is still considered, you know, an important feature. Um, you know, if you're talking about words not mattering, then you're only looking at a very small picture and you need to widen your scope. And the reason I say that is when you're saying that words don't matter is like you're saying that it doesn't matter what people say to you. And okay, in some cases that's a good thing, but when you're saying, when you're calling something a limited point, then that's, that's not healthy. Please excuse me while I do deal with a couple of personal messages from a couple of people. I shall do, Gillian. I shall remind you later. Um, it'll probably be when I close down the live stream. <laughs> Troy, you're talking about a TARDIS. Smaller on the outside, bigger on the inside. Well, you know, debate is all healthy. It's, uh, everybody has their opinions and their thoughts. Um, it's having a healthy mindset and being able to accept other people's opinions. And I accept Spencer's opinion. I accept Spencer's terminology. Um, however, I will say that I think I would be careful with what you say, Spencer, because when you're talking about phenomena, when you're talking about spiritual stuff, yeah, when it comes to that, it's there's a lot more that goes on. There's a lot more research and there's a lot more people that are aware of the different terminologies. It's not like it was 50 years ago when people were going ghost and talking about spirit. Now, these days, people can tell the difference between a ghost and a spirit. And okay, yes, people will still put them as the same thing, but a ghost is something that is haunting and manifesting in one particular area on the same, like, day, on the same location, you know, manifesting in that same way. However, it is still spirit, and it's still connected to center point for, uh, center point, like, energy force. So yeah, um, as some of you know, I will be doing stuff with the Ouija board in the hopefully not too distant future, um, depending on who's coming over to help with this experiment. Um, I am actually already doing stuff 
um, like the EVP side of things. And there have been one or two interesting things that are kind of quite poignant. Um, some of you may know what they are privately. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm working on like the astral projection um, side of things. Spencer, I'm not saying you don't know nothing about the subject. And quite frankly, Ouija boards do not attract the wrong type of spirit. And if that is your opinion, I suggest you leave. Ouija boards are a tool like any other. You know, if you're talking about Ouija boards attracting the wrong type of spirit, then you should be saying to me, well, you shouldn't be using digital recorder, you shouldn't be using um, a K2 meter, you shouldn't be being a medium, because all of those are tools, and all of those technically can attract the wrong sort of spirit. It's so, alright Matty, I understand where you're coming from. I also know your culture. And I agree, spirits can be anything, can, as you said privately to me Matty just now, um, life guides, spirit animals, they're the same thing. Uh, bear with me, Troy. Let me just read your message. Yeah, I agree. I was just, like, scaling it down for a couple of people. Exactly. Tricksters like Ouija boards. However, tricksters can use anything from an ovulus to a K2 meter to a, you know, digital recorder to a camera to using a scrying mirror, a pendulum, tarot cards, mediums, anything. You know, spirit will teach in whatever way it needs to and it will use whatever tool you are using. So turning around and calling a Ouija board you know, that it's attracting the wrong energy. Well, anything can attract the wrong sort of energy. I think that's the best thing you could do, Spencer.
Actually, they're not. So, Ouija boards are not evil. It is the intent behind them. And it is the skill set using them. And I hate to say it, if you say Ouija boards are evil, then I'm sorry, you have very little knowledge on actual Ouija boards. Ouija boards derive from talking boards, from um, spiritual writing, which is where you literally sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and you do automatic writing. It is exactly the same. And it I hate to say it, automatic writing was one of the first tools used in the paranormal field. And that goes back to hundreds of years ago. Ouija boards are fairly new from the Victorian times, but before that it was automatic writing. Oh, Matty. Oh, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. It's an interesting debate. I have had this debate with him before. It's quite clear that, you know, whatever I say is, you know, his opinion is very, very strong. Unfortunately, it is so arse over tip that it's very, very questionable. I mean, I, various of you know various friends of mine, and even they say, Ouija boards are a tool, they're part of your tool set. It's not, they're not evil. The Ouija board itself is not evil. So yeah. So anyway. We see, I've used Ouija boards. I've, I've had a lot of success with Ouija boards. I've never actually had anything bad happen with a pe with a Ouija board. In fact, I've had more things bad happen when I've been working as a medium than I have working with Ouija boards. So, you know, it's kind of like, like I said, it's not the actual item that you use to connect with spirit. It's what spirit wants to manifest for to you. So yeah, it is a bit questionable. I'm going to say, Matty, he is, to an extent, a spiritualist, but he's of a mindset that is of the vast majority over here that are seen to be doing because it's like, oh, it's all airy-fairy. And unfortunately, I'm a paranormal researcher, and I go a bit further than the airy-fairy. Um, you know, I'm not one of those that will run round in the woods going, oh, look at all the pretty elementals. It's like, yes, it's an elemental. Okay, yes, it's an elemental. Let's be grateful for it. And it will manifest in whatever way it chooses. It may, to me, look like her and the hunter. To somebody else, it may look completely different. It may, may look demonic. Um, it just had to be said. Sorry, it just had to be said. Because I know you're earwigging. Um, but on the flip side of it, um, it's kind of like, it's like the vast majority of spiritualists over here. They want to be all airy-fairy, and if you go into that clique of people that are, oh, you must do it this way, and it's all angelic, and, oh, Ouija bowls are bad, 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 oh, they attract negative. No, it has nothing to do with Ouija boards themselves. If you go in eyes blind to what you're doing, then yes, spirit are going to use that against you. Spirit will use your own fear against you. So I'm going to use an analogy here. This is actually one that is used for many, many different reasons. Say you have two groups of people. Some of them are skeptics. Some of them are believers. You take 
say there's like 20 people and you split them off into 10 people. So you've got two groups. You tell one lot of 10 that a location is haunted and you can guarantee that they will have experiences. Then you take the other 10 and you tell them nothing at all. Now, if this location is haunted or not, that 10 that aren't in the knowledge of it being haunted or not, they should have experiences too. However, if both gro groups have experiences, then yes, you can say that location is haunted. But if both groups are like one group has experiences because they're psyched up, then yeah, you can question their actual intent um, and agenda. And is it because they're so like wanting it to happen that it's gonna happen? Or is it because the other group are like just wandering around, not really aware? So you have that two sides of it. And it's the same with Ouija boards. If you use a Ouija board and you are fearful because you're unsure what's going to happen, spirit will pick up on that and use it against you. Yeah. Uh, hang on, bear with me. Let me read what Troy's just said. Um, I... I agree, Troy. You know, mm, yeah, if you're living in a mindset that is of an insidious nature, yeah, you're basically a living, breathing Ouija board. I agree with that. Yeah, Matty, you and me have both tested this this analogy, and I think I think anyone who's worked in the paranormal field have tested that analogy at least once in their lifetime, um, and once in their platform of work. Um, so yeah, it's it's yeah. Um, yeah, I mean the thing is when you do that kind of test for want of a better word experiment um <laughs> um yeah when you do that experiment it's very much a you're not expecting like massive amounts because you're you yourself are watching how that group are not really you actually researching what's actually going on in the building or location you're actually paying more attention to how that group are and, you know, I always like going, okay, I like to mix the two groups up. So you've got a few skeptics in each group. So you can, you can guarantee if the skeptic says something, then you know that they're being genuine as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I am. Yeah, Troy, I, I would agree. But anyway, I'm going to... <laughs> I would say he probably is. I mean, I know someone else. My, my snoop is earwigging. I can, I can see. I can see you. And plus you've, you've messaged me a couple of times. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I was going to say something really deep and meaningful. I, it's deep and meaningful. It was in my head and now it's gone. <laughs> the void that is in my brain right now. Um, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If you guys want to talk and discuss this a bit further, let me know and I'll do a live stream maybe either Wednesday or Thursday night. Um, so we got, so you guys can all like discuss it a bit further. Um, I'm probably going to do a second part to my thesis over the next couple of days, um, and upload it. So, you know, 
obviously over the next few weeks I'm going to be writing my thesis um, as well as like planning out how I'm going to do the experiment um, and then it's just a waiting game of whoever wants to come and help me with the experiment um, you know I am going to be doing experiments experiments on my own which I'm already doing um, you know and it's always nice to hear your opinions on things so yeah just you know share your opinions discuss these things with me um, you know, that's, that's how we work. You know, everybody has a right to their opinion. However, I am going to question people who, you know, jump on the Ouija boards are bad when I know for a fact they're doing things that are, you know, no different from using a Ouija board. So yeah, I am going to question that. Yeah, um, I'm probably more likely to do it on Wednesday because Wednesday is a pretty good night to actually do a live stream. Yeah, Troy, I think you want to help. I know, Matty, you want to help. Um, I believe Malcolm wants to help as well, um, but it's all kind of like fitting everything in. I know um, Andrew wanted to help as well. So, yeah, it's all like kind of fitting you guys in um, and seeing when, like, obviously, Matty when you're coming over, you know, um, so yeah, um, but yeah, anyway, um, off the topic of paranormal, um, if you guys have any, like, questions or want to discuss things with me on this topic, by all means, let me know, um, also, you know, let me know what you think of this makeup look, um, that would also be good, <laughs> you know, because I do, I do my Sunday night live streams mainly for makeup and to talk to you guys, it's always nice and interesting to see your debate. And to the snoop, will you please stop messaging me now? Because <laughs> my phone keeps making a weird noise. <laughs> yeah, you'll be finishing work around our night time aren't you yet so yeah yeah cool yay so anyway I'm going to love you leave you I'm sorry this um live stream has been mega long um I know it's not usually this long um but yeah, this is, it's been an interesting debate. Um, it's also nice to kind of sort out the main men from the boys, as it were. Um, you know, I know, Gillian, you don't like Ouija boards. Um, but I also know you respect people who use them. Um, you don't turn around and say they're evil. Um, you actually have a, a respect and understanding of them. So I know that with you. Um... But as for Spencer, it's like when he turns around and says things like, oh, it's evil. Well, mm, OK. I mean, technically, you could call mediumship evil. Oh, you could even say that spiritualist is evil. But yeah, no, I'm glad you guys have enjoyed this uh, live stream. Glad you guys have enjoyed this makeup look. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry this live stream has been so long. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, message me privately. Um, get some questions together because I'm going to do a live stream on Wednesday, I think. Um, I'll keep you posted to see how I'm feeling on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I will hopefully do a second live stream this week. Um, and then we can all discuss it. So yeah, I shall love you, leave you and speak to you later.